Recognize this guy? That's a young Jeff Greenfield, who was Sunday morning's very first media critic. And my, what he and you and I have seen in the years since. When Sunday morning marked its 25th anniversary, I was invited back to survey how the media landscape had changed. When this broadcast was born, I noted there was no cable news, no abundance of cable channels, no C-SPAN. Reasonably big changes, sure, but what has happened in the last five years can't even be captured by the word change. It is as if the most fundamental laws of the media universe have been utterly overthrown. Sure, some changes count as more of the same. The big three networks, which divided 90% of the primetime audience 30 years ago, now divide about 30%, but they are still the dominant players in prime time. And the major alternatives, basic cable like Lifetime, ESPN for sports, HBO for pay cable alternatives, are thriving. But where the last five years have brought a revolution is in how information and entertainment are delivered, and where. Five years ago, MySpace was the barest glimmer of an idea for a social networking site in Los Angeles. It's now a worldwide presence with well over 120 million visitors a month. Facebook didn't even exist five years ago. It now draws more than 200 million visitors. Ask anyone about YouTube before 2005, they'd have thought you were talking about an ointment. By last fall, YouTube was drawing 100 million viewers a month, and every minute, 10 hours of video are posted, ranging from news, sports, and entertainment clips to original creations. If you want to see what Mentos and Diet Coke can create in combination, YouTube provides the answer, dozens of them. Well, okay, just more sources of media, right? Wrong. What these and countless other examples represent is a sea change that has upended all of our assumptions about how media are delivered. Today, everything we see and hear and read is digitized, a product of those countless ones and zeros. And that in turn means that as far as technology is concerned, it's all the same. Print, audio, video, no difference. So what? Here's what. Once upon a time, say when Sunday morning was born, every kind of information came in a different form. If you read mail, it came in an envelope. If you wanted to listen to news, you had to buy a radio. If you wanted to play music at home, you needed a turntable and records. If you wanted to read a newspaper, you needed to buy the paper. A movie, that was a trip to the theater or maybe the VCR. A phone call away from home, you had to find a pay phone. Write a report, get a typewriter and paper, and then find a copier and a mailbox to send it around. Now, to use the buzzword, convergence is here. Every conceivable kind of information, information in the broader sense, comes to us on the same device. This is a newspaper, a TV screen, a camera, a theater, a file cabinet, a radio, a Walkman, a Yellow Pages, an edit room, a travel agency. And at root, this revolution has shifted massive amounts of power away from the providers to the users of information. You don't want to watch a program when it's on? Hey, it's always on somewhere. You like one song, but you don't want to buy an album? iTunes will oblige you. You don't want to buy a newspaper? Read it for free online. One reason why newspapers as we know them may not be around much longer. Which raises this heretical thought. Whether on a TV screen or computer or cell phone or toaster, the fundamental things still apply or should. A love of storytelling, a love of clear, vivid language, a respect for history. The world did not start five years ago, even if YouTube did. These still matter most, which may be one big reason why 30 years on, this broadcast endures.